So now in this video, we're going to be building a not logic gate using the NPN 2N2222 transistor, as you can see there. And uh, we're going to be building it on this board. All the parts that I need, all the components I should say, should be available on this A-stable multi-vibrator circuit I did my recent videos on. So to begin with, we're going to use this switch here and we're going to use these five slots for most of the circuitry. So to begin with, we're going to take a resistor and we're going to attach the resistor to the uh, second row here. You can see there's five rows down there. The positive there and then we're going to take this gray jumper there and we're going to put it one row above where we just stuck the resistor and then we're going to grab one of the LEDs and now normally I work from up to down positive down to negative as you can see here we got negative above positive so we're going to put the uh, LED like this the long lead goes towards the more positive side short lead towards the more negative side that's if you want it to conduct and uh, light up which we do and make sure I got it on its own row there we go and so now this is the first part of the circuit and as you can see all it is is a simple LED circuit when power is on the LED lights up when the power is off the LED turns off pretty simple now we're gonna add some more to it so that we actually invert whether it's on or off by giving it a signal so to begin with we're gonna start with the transistor and I have one of these 2N2222 transistors that was part of the a stable multi vibrator circuit and as you can see here when you're looking at the flat side which we'll be doing with the breadboard turned this way the uh, pin on the left is the emitter, the middle pin is the base, and the pin on the right is the collector. So now you want the collector towards the more positive side of the circuit, and uh, that's going to be the LED side of the circuit. And there we go, it's in focus. And so we're going to set the collector right there where the uh, resistor comes to the power, to the positive power supply there and it also connects to the LED and now I'm going to grab one of the gray jumpers because the emitter needs to be towards the more negative side of the circuit so you can see there's some stuff in the way you can see flat side here collector to the right then the emitter to the left so the emitter needs to be more negative I'll connect that it's actually best to put the jumpers down before the components. The resistor is kind of making it hard to do that. But I'm doing a step-by-step -step build. And uh, But there you go. You can see the jumpers there on the left. So now the LED, the circuit's going to work exactly the same way. That's because right now the transistor is off. We have to bias the transistor. We have to make the base there the middle pin have a higher voltage we got zero volts down here the ground we need to get at least about 0 0.6 0 0.7 volts to the base to turn that on that's how we're gonna invert the uh, we're gonna invert the signal but that's how we're gonna turn the LED off but before we do that we need to add some more circuitry so now to control this circuit we're gonna use this switch here and the switch is going to give a positive signal. I'll yank this little jumper out of there. And uh, then I'll attach it to that top pin there. And then we could actually do this on either side. But as you can see, this is a short jumper. This is close to the color red, orange. And uh, it fits nicely right between this gap. It's harder to find. A jumper that uh, fits nicely between that gap and have close to a red color so that's going to give a positive signal to the top of the switch the uh, left and right side are always connected and uh, same with the bottom left and right side are always connected but it's separated top to bottom 
as a switch. So now we're going to grab this uh, resistor up here. This should be a 27 kilo ohm resistor. We can use a high value resistor here because we just need a small signal. And then we're going to grab the other LED. And now the more positive is up towards the top. And uh, I didn't say this, the longer lead, that's the anode. The shorter lead is the cathode. Anode goes towards more positive. The cathode goes towards the more negative side of the circuit. So we got that there. And now we're going to use one of these jumpers. As I said, this a stable multi-vibrator that I did before has all the components I really need for this, this circuit. So we come here, and now we plug this to the base of the transistor. And as I said before, when the base becomes more positive than the emitter by about 0.7 volts, that will turn the transistor on. So we will apply power to this. Let's turn it that way. You see that the LED is on once we apply power. But when we hit the switch here, you can see that the LED goes off. And we had a little trouble. This switch is kind of worn. It's getting old and stuff. But uh, when I get a good press of it, you can see that the LED turns instantly off. Also, you'll see this LED when I press the switch. It, has, it turns on. It's really faint though because we're using a somewhat high value resistor there. So, a small signal to the base of the transistor, this NPN type transistor, small positive signal, that actually takes the current away and ultimately it inverts the signal. This is our input when this LED is off, this one's on, and then when that one's on, that one's off. So this is our input this one is our output. So now, since we have this other circuit here, we have capacitors. We can add another effect to this circuit. We'll take one of these capacitors. This is a 47 microfarad capacitor. It's polarized. This side needs to be more negative. It has a shorter lead. Well, the other side needs to be more positive. It has a longer lead. And so, both of these rails are energized. They're both able to provide power even though I only have everything on that side for now and so what we'll do is we'll just take the capacitor here and you'll see we're inserting it directly the negative sides and the negative rail of course but uh, the positive side of the capacitor comes right next to the resistor which is also where the uh, bottom part of the switch is so now when we close the switch watch that LED so now we're holding the switch. Now the input is high, it's on, however you want to say it. Uh, if you're doing ones and zeros, right now this is one, right now that one's zero. And uh, so those are some different terms for the same thing. But in any case, now the input's on, the output's off. When I let go of the switch, you'll see that the input stayed on for a little while. Well, the output stayed off for a little while, and then, and then they switched. So that was determined by the uh, capacitor's charge. So when I close the switch, not only does current go through here, but uh, the capacitor charges practically instantly. And then when I release the switch, the capacitor discharges through the resistor, the LED, through the base of the transistor, down to the emitter, and uh, keeps the transistor on for a little bit while the capacitor discharges. Once it discharges, uh, as much as it can in this circuit then this LED comes back on and you'll notice too That when the LED comes back on it doesn't flip instantly on it kind of fades on it fades pretty quickly in this particular circuit But it still fades so we could use a larger value resistor if we did that Then when I let go this LED would stay on longer that one would stay off longer and the fade would take longer. So you can make a lot of adjustments to the circuit to do interesting things and uh, ultimately they're educational because you can apply all these concepts to other circuits that you're studying.